Hi, Scrolling Along with Susan here. Hey, I went back to my YouTube channel and looked at the analytics to see what you all like watching the most. And I noticed my segmentation videos got the most attention. So I'm going to do another one of those. And with this segmentation, I chose a pattern out of The Best of Wood, which is a 1993 edition, volume two, of a hummingbird. And I had to enlarge it 200% to print it out. And I have three or four copies here to use for my segmentation. But if you don't have this book, or obviously not everyone's going to be able to get a hold of this book, you can find inspiration in quilting books, in children's coloring books, and I'm sure you'll be able to find a pattern that you can use for segmentation. Now, the hardest thing about segmentation is finding quarter inch thick or thinner boards to use. And I am lucky enough that I have the machines to make them a quarter of an inch thick. If you don't, you may have to order them or find a store that has them in stock. So I have four different colors of quarter inch thick wood. And what I've done, I made sure that they were sanded flat, smooth, ready to go. I marked the back of the board with pencil so that when it's done cutting, I know which one is the front and the back. Because often you have all these little pieces at the end and you get kind of confused, okay, which side is the correct side? Even though you have a pattern, it's easier if you mark the back. Now all of these boards are just a little bit wider or longer and you want to make sure that they're all lined up on one end at least before you put them all together. Now some people use brad nails to hold all four of these together, but I'm going to use two-sided tape. It's better to use strips of two-sided tape than one whole piece so that if one gives out, you have the other one as a backup. And I'm just going to line these first two up. And then you do the same with the next pieces. Along with the double-sided tape, I am also using clear tape, packing tape, to go around the entire piece where I'm going to be cutting and putting the pattern. This will do a couple things. It will also ensure that it will not come apart and it will lubricate your scroll saw blade from the top and the bottom, hoping that it will last a little bit longer. And you may go through two or three scroll saw blades, but this will definitely help. And now I can spray the pattern and put it right on top of the tape. Another reason to use clear packing tape and not a solid color like a uh, the blue painters tape is so that you can see exactly where you want to put your pattern. I have a knot I need to work around um, that I don't want in the final piece. So this way I can see my pattern and use some good, good glue. Now all I'm really interested in cutting out is the hummingbird right now, not the border. This is definitely an advanced piece and you have to really look at it and decide where you're going to start with this piece, where you're going to start cutting and where you're going to end. You want to try to keep the whole piece together for stability. So I'm going to drill pilot holes in areas where I think I'm going to need the extra room to turn. I have my pilot holes located in where I think I might need them. You can always add more. Obviously, you put in the pilot holes in the waist, not in the bird. It doesn't matter what scroll saw you have. You want to make sure that your scroll saw will be at a 90, the blade will be at a 90 degree angle. This is crucial in order to get all of your pieces to fit well. So once you choose your blade, and I chose a Pegas MGT number five for my blade. Don't go any lower than a three, but the smaller blade, the less of a gap there's going to be in between. Once you get it secured in your scroll saw, you need to check for that 90 degree. And exactly 90 degree, check it front to back or back to front and on the side. Right, I have 
threaded my blade through my first pilot hole. I'm going to start here, cut in this direction, then come back and cut each piece so when they fall out, the main part of the bird is still there and come back and cut this and then this and I'll have the whole tail cut out. Never push the blade. Go slower. You can slow the speed down more or it doesn't really matter with the speed as long as you are controlling your piece. And it's going to take a while. Don't expect to be rushing through this. You are cutting one inch hard wood to four different types. So it's not going to be a fast project. I've cut the outside of the tail feathers. Now I've come back to my original pilot hole because it's easier at this angle to cut each one of the feathers. All right, first tail feather has been cut loose. One just fell out down underneath, so I'll have to get that. So at this point, make sure you have markings showing you which side is the front and which one is the bottom or the top and the bottom, because you can see how tiny these are and how confusing they're going to be. Take one of your blank pattern pieces and place the, each piece that you cut on that so it makes it easier later on knowing where they are supposed to go. I did get a little bit off on some of these lines, but it really doesn't matter in the final picture because they're all going to be off and they will still fit just as nicely together. I now have all the pieces cut out and I had made a mistake. I wanted to show you what I did so maybe you can learn from my mistake. When I was cutting out these feathers from the wings, I cut on the outside all the way around which left nothing to support these middle pieces and when I cut through the middle pieces it took a chunk right out of one of them. So now it's time for me to painstakingly remove all of the tape and make sure all of the markings are on the back here. When removing the tape be very careful. Um, these are pretty fragile pieces. They're pretty thin. They're only a quarter inch thick and even though they're hardwood, um, if you gently twist it, it should be fine, like this. Gently twist to remove the tape. Here you can see I'm using one of the waste pieces, one thickness of it, to kind of help hold my bird while I'm gluing it up. I use tight bond quick and thick. I also use toothpicks, I use straight pins, and whatever I need to to hold it in place while it dries. And the back, I think I would have changed this a little bit. I have paper and then I have that rubber mat. I think it would have been better to use a plastic sheet underneath that would hold it still firm and it wouldn't have pieces of um, paper that I had to sand off. I'm not sure about this method. This is a lot more tedious. I have to do it in pieces. I'm using super glue and now I'm going to do these, these three pieces and then I have to hold them for quite some time for them to dry before moving on. So, I mean, it's another method and you might find a method that works out better for you. All four of these have been glued and they do need to be sanded, but I do not want to sand them until I have something to support them on the back. What I did for one of them is I took one of the waste parts that I had and I drew on the inside and cut out, it's about an eighth of an inch thinner than the actual pattern. And, and this is just using eighth of an inch Baltic birch plywood and I can glue one of these to this, which 
once it's glued, then you can have a nice strong background to be able to sand. So I'm cutting out the background out of two different materials, so I have two different backgrounds. I'm cutting this in the same manner. This is the second background piece for two of my birds. It is time for sanding. I use 220 grit sandpaper and sand by hand and then I transfer to a Dremel tool to clean up the top. I also want to put a nice little rounded edge around the bird. From that point I clean off all the residue and I add a little bit of black marker on three of the eyeballs because the one is dark but the other two are light and then I put a little dab of white paint in the center. It's really up to you how you want to finish your birds. I am just using a little bit of mineral oil because I really like the woods that I chose but some people use varnish or polyurethane. I now have four unique looking hummingbirds even the one with the broken wing. Now it's up to you how you want to finish it from here. You can put picture hanging hardware on the back, hang them from a wall, you can turn them into refrigerator magnets. I think with one of these little guys I might just add it to another piece of interesting artwork, add a couple more birds and have it that way. So I hope you've really enjoyed this project and might make one of your own. Thanks for watching.